This is a block of metal with four buttons and a knob that can be pressed. By default, they're mapped to MIDI controls, but you can set any hand twister combo to a single press, like muting a mic and turning off video at the same time. That is if you can figure out how to program it. G'day, I'm Cam, and this is the DOIO KB04-01 Macro Pad, also known as the Megalodon 4, making it the smaller brother to the very popular Megalodon Triple Knob Macro Pad. And I've got to say, this is the worst experience I've ever had programming macros. It's a great piece of hardware, but this software experience is bad. Just to give you an example, there's no manual included in the box, but there is a QR code in the back to scan for more help. More help than nothing. So you scan it and great. Yeah, that's not even the worst, so buckle up. <laughs> Starting with the hardware, the CNC aluminum body is stunning. There's USB-C ports on either side, so you can choose the orientation that you want. And being wired only, once you plug it in, you'll notice the RGBs light up, including underglow. If you remove the plain keycaps, you'll see Gatoron Pro Yellow mechanical switches. These have no tactile bump or audible click at actuation point. Swap these with other switches you have for your preferred feel and other keycaps for a new look. Although the metal knob is smooth, I haven't found it to be slippery, and it's mounted on top of a rotary encoder with a native resolution of 20. That means there are 20 notches felt or keystrokes sent for a full 360 degree rotation. Okay, back to the software. So it seems scanning the QR code adds HTTPS to the URL, but they're not using encryption. But if you just write the plain website in the box, then it goes through with minimal warnings. Having to poke around, we can find the device software and we're given an RAR file. This could have easily been a zip file because if you don't have WinRAR installed, you have to go do that before you can uncompress the package. Whew, thank God there's a help file. It says to open VR. I've got two screenshots and two JSON files. No VR. Ah, looks like they've got copies on the website. Let's grab the latest version. Now I've got to click file and load key map. Uh, there's no file. Just this dude wiggling. Maybe let's go back and try the old version. Okay, this is better. Now it seems the two JSON files are two different button layouts. I like this one, although it is presuming you have the knob facing you. Now we can map our four buttons and the knob when it's turned or pressed. It just acts like a button. Okay, let's do something basic. Let's make knob turn left, J, right, L, and press K. Now we can rewind, fast forward, and play pause YouTube videos. If we set turning the knob to brackets, we can now change the brush size in Photoshop. On top of the basic keys, you can also set media, special, and lighting. Oh, what about lighting up here? Oh, breaks the program. Nice. Apparently with the version of QMK firmware on this macro pad, you have to use the physical buttons to change the RGB. You may have noticed the MO1 button. Now holding this will momentarily switch to layer one, which is our second tier of commands. These are RGB controls by default. Now you can change these to do anything else, but if you wanna change the RGB, you have to go back in, remap the RGB controls, change your RGB, and then set it back to the other commands that you want. I chose blue and it's gonna stay blue because I don't wanna do that process ever again. But if we flip it over, you're gonna see my favorite tech trend that's making a comeback, frosted acrylic, which is teasing the PCB inside. But mate, you know that I love to see the actual insides of tech. So let's open it up and have a proper look. With access to the PCB, we can see they're using Gatoron switch mounts, and the microprocessor is a GHE APM32. What really impresses me though is the high quality of parts. Even on the inside, where they could have easily ramped up speeds with tooling and left defects, it's smooth with a high finished quality. Speaking of manufacturing, let's talk about today's sponsor. If your project needs a custom PCB, metal CNC'd, or parts 3D printed, then head to PCBWay.com, where you can simply upload your file, pick the material, color, and quality for an instant quote to be manufactured and shipped to you. Big thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring today's video. Now for the software. Now, I doubt you'll be gaming solely with this macro pad, but in a recent video, you saw me create my keyboard latency tester, nicknamed Speedy Kiwi. Hooking this up gives us an average response time of nine milliseconds, which is faster than most keyboards, including my current build, which I don't notice any leg on when wired and gaming. Now, this brings us to programming macros on this macro pad. I believe there's about three tiers that you need to kind of cover. First tier would be sending plain keystrokes. Second tier is key combinations and can it have delays between when those are sent. And the third tier would be sending system commands, like opening a program. First tier is simple enough. Type a string of text you want, assign it to a key, and you're done. Second tier, let's set up a keyboard combo for a mic mute command. In Zoom, that's Alt-A. I'm gonna click in the field, hold Alt and press A. Nothing happens. It says we must enter text directly or wrap basic key codes in curly brackets. Oh, we should click for help. Nothing. That's great. A Google will eventually take us to a QMK knowledge base of all key codes. But I found it easier to type a question mark and then what you're looking for. And so to hold Alt and then press A, we need to put those two key codes inside curly brackets. We can now map this to a button to mute and unmute our mic. Now, if we wanna add video, we need to add Alt V. So I go back to the same macro and add in Alt V 
and save that. And now both will go off with a single key press. Now that is a gross way to write macros. Sure, if you enjoy writing Excel spreadsheet expressions, then you might love it. But I normally prefer a keyboard macro recorder where you simply just hit record, type out what you want, and it logs down that those are the keys you want pressed. To throw salt in the wound, we can see that version 1.3.1 of VR has the ability to log what keys I'm pressing with the key tester, just doesn't bundle that into a macro. But version three does. And so I want to find out why can't we just use this with version three. VIA version three has a list of supported keyboards and DOIO, the brand, is one of them. Not really, because if you filter down to the keyboard specific, it's not for this model. It's for the bigger brother, the Megalodon Triple Knob. Being more popular, there's a lot more information and resources, as well as negative reviews of people just trying to figure out how to use this thing. Keybmonkey, which sell the Triple Knob, say that the compatibility of Megalodon macro pads with VR has become worse, and the JSON files are more difficult to use than ever before. <laughs> Checks out. Uh, the guide continues to outline the upgrade process from version 1.3.1 to 2.2, which should work with three. The main thing that I want to highlight is that the upgrade is only for units with STM32 chipsets, not at Mega 32 U4s. And so if you've bought the triple knob model, secondhand or new, then you gotta pull it apart to find out what processor you have inside. And my macro pad, well, we have the GHE APM32, which is a STM clone. This may or may not get a future firmware update, depending on if someone makes it. Mate, this whole thing is a mess for a current product. Like, VIA version three was released in March of 2023. They have since removed version 1.3.1 from their official distribution. Now I've only had this for a few months, but going back on DOIO social media, the earliest I can see this model was August, 2022. And so this product was not even a year old before its limited software support was already officially discontinued. I don't like that. And it seems like it's falling on the retailers to provide the support. I was sent this by WhatGeek. They're an online keyboard enthusiast website and their software page will give you a zip file containing the correct version of VR and JSON config file along with a help guide. That alone is a better experience than what the manufacturer is giving you, which is a shame because I love the hardware. It's built so well and I want it to live beyond one years old before it's depreciated. And so I want to find out, can I make this work with VR version three? All right, it's not often during a video that I ask for you to subscribe, but I've spent so much time on this thing and I got it working with version three. We can go to useVR.app, click settings, turn on the design tab, enable version two depreciations, and then load our JSON file. Now this is gonna give us an error. It says zero X feed, not a valid vendor ID, which is odd because if we go into device manager on Windows, we can drill down into the macro pad and find its device hardware ID. It matches. So I started digging into this zero X feed thing a little bit more. Uh, apparently it's like a generic USB vendor ID that a lot of these QMK based boards use. And because of that, I found a GitHub thread where someone was complaining about this exact issue for a different keyboard. And the solution was just to delete zero X from the vendor ID. And so I opened up the JSON file, removed it, and it works. That's it. Like literally, that's all that needs to be taken off. Surely the VIA team could add some regex that if 0x feed is passed, delete the 0x, and then people can just naturally use the files they've already got. Also, you notice we've got nine errors up here. It's warning us that we can't control the RGB via the software. Anyway, now we can go into macro, select a new macro, go into full screen, and hit record. Alt A, Alt V. Done. Bro, I think that's a pat in the back, eh? What, mate? Ugh. Oh, we also unlocked timed delays with VIA version three. Ah, uh, yeah, upgrade firmware to use delays. Well, that brings us to tier three, which is, can it open up programs? No, not really. Technically, you could use auto hotkey on Windows or keyboard maestro on a Mac to take, say, F13 to F24, which are keys that aren't used in your system, to middleman and convert that into a key press or an action to open up a program. But there's gotta be a line in the sand somewhere where you kind of just like sink so many hours trying to make this stuff work when you could very easily just buy an off the shelf product that has all of this stuff built in. Looking at these macro pads online, you can see multiple retailers saying that they're VR compatible or VR programmable. <laughs> yes, it's technically supported by depreciated software as long as you find the correct JSON file to load in. But thankfully, because you watch my videos, you can download that JSON file that's fixed that lets you use version three from the description. And if you've got a different keyboard, Tweak it, bro. Delete the zero X. Oh, whoops, the price. Um, 83 Australian, 54 US dollars. So it's a beautiful piece of hardware. 
and we're gonna leave it at that. <laughs> if you liked today's video, thumbs it. If you loved it, sub it. And then check out my Speedy Keepy project up here or a tech review down there. Thank you for watching. Bye.